I've come to Valencia, a city recently voted one of the best places in the world to live, to meet up with some Americans who have made the leap and set up life here. It's like MTV Cribs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'm curious, I want to know why? they left the United States. Honestly, politically, I, I think the US is a shit show. Why yeah. not just say that? And kind of more importantly, I want to know if in Spain, a country full of its own problems. Politicians that are getting caught going to functions that are pro-Franco and. Is life any better? Is this <laughs> the paradise they hoped it would be? I'm off to meet Erica. She was a participant in my Move to Spain Masterclass, my online course that, that helps people move here. And I've never actually asked her why she was, you know, she decided to leave the States. And I'm really curious to see how life is working out for her. And buildings with no elevators. <laughs> Hello. Wow, it's like MTV Cribs. Exactly. <laughs> Erica moved to Spain from Denver in October 2021 with the help of a European passport via her great-great-great-grandmother from Liechtenstein. She lives in Valencia's beachside Cabañal Barrio and runs a couple of YouTube channels, one for teaching English and another about life in Spain, which I'll link below. And we kick off with a tour of her flat. Yeah, it's very open. My friend said it's like Americana style. Like. Is it your Spanish friend said that? Yeah, because I think Spanish apartments typically they have a door and the Kitchen. Yeah, like an cool open stuff. kitchen would be, yes, see, si, cocina americana. The piano, now you play, right? You're a singer, you're yeah. a musician. Yeah, don't, don't make me play. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's very light filled, so the bedrooms are on the light side of the. Oh, yeah, so much light. Wow, yeah. Which, yeah, also sold me on the apartment because yeah. a lot of Spanish apartments are, are pretty dark. I was living in Denver, I was paying like $1,000 a month for like a bedroom in a house. Yeah. You know? Here I pay for, so I split it with a roommate. Yeah. Um, so 325 we each wow. pay. So a third of what you were paying yeah. in the States. Tell me why you left the States. I was thinking, you know, people come to the masterclass and I don't, I know they want to go to Spain and know why they want to go to Spain, but I don't know why they want to leave where they're leaving, yeah. so. Denver, I was working at a nonprofit, um, an immigrant resource center. So I was teaching English to adults and also helping people prepare for their citizenship exam. And then I also taught piano lessons and played in the band. Yeah. And then the pandemic, you know, everything shut down. We weren't playing music. I was furloughed for a bit from work and then started putting the, the pieces in order and came in 2021. And were you, you know, was some of leaving the States any sort of dissatisfaction? Yeah, I love lots of things about the US, but um, Spain is, is so social. Like friendly or socialist? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely more socialist. No, like sociable. Like, yeah. um, and I think now I'm starting to think that a lot of it has to do with the infrastructure. Like in the US, unless you're living in like New York City or like San Francisco, you're car dependent yeah. to get most places. That means you just, you don't see people as much as you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Part of it's that, the infrastructure, that everything's so spread out and there's not good public transit. There's like a sense of, of low loneliness in a lot of places in the US. Do you want to show me the neighborhood? Yeah, let's go. Cool. So. <laughs> we head to Valencia's enormous urban beach just a few blocks from Erica's flat. There was an article in the New York Times a couple days ago about Spain, Portugal and how actually Americans are moving. I don't see this so much in Spain, but some locals are complaining that it's like, okay, cheap for Americans, but not for locals. Like there's a lot of Dutch people in Valencia, that's a German. Belgian, um, but most Spanish people I talk to, they're like, oh, there's not very many Americans yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think Valencia isn't really on the radar of most Americans. Mm -hmm. like Americans, Barcelona, yeah, they'll probably think of Barcelona, Madrid. Yeah. Do you hang out with Spaniards, with other Americans, or who are your friends here? I mean, I really tried to make Spanish-speaking friends since that was kind of the purpose of moving here. Yeah. Um, so most of my friends, we speak Spanish together. Spanish friends, Argentine, French, Italian, but I know people who hardly speak any Spanish. There's so many English speakers here that you can kind of live in a community that's English speaking. Is it too early for a vermouth for you or? I love her move. <laughs> Welcome to Valencia. Yeah, yeah. As we drink this medicinal drink, um, you mentioned healthcare. Obviously, that's a big concern for a lot of people who are living in the States, the cost. It is a big concern, yeah. I mean, if you have a full-time job in the States, you're gonna have healthcare, most likely, but there was a point where I was 
not working full time. I was paying my own healthcare in the States and it was like three or four hundred dollars a month. Here I pay 40 euros a month. And I actually, I got a sprain in my foot from playing frisbee and I got an MRI scan like, and I didn't pay, like, I'm always going to the doctor like ready to pay like co-pays, like have my credit card ready and they're like, bye, you're done. And I'm like, you mean I don't have to pay more? Like, you know, so obviously healthcare is something that's cheaper. I mean, how is the cost of living here compared to, you know, life in the States? I mean, Valencia is cheaper than Madrid and Barcelona for sure. You can live, I have friends who make a thousand euros a month and they still take vacations, they travel, they go out to eat. I mean, if you make 2,000 euros monthly here, it's like, you're doing really well. It all sounds great. What's, is there anything that's not great? Like Americans are used to like a lot of space and like, this is my space, this is my bubble, this is my like noise zone yeah. where you can't enter. And here it's just, it's more communal. Like it's a shared space, it's shared <laughs> sound waves where um, if I'm being loud, in the street, like, you can't say anything, you know? Yeah. Is it life that you expected? Is, is, is life the same uh, or different from what you thought it would be? Honestly, I thought it might be harder to build a community here, because I came on my own. And like, yeah, you gotta put in effort, like put yourself out there, go to meetups, <laughs> play a sport, um, find language partners. But like I said before, people are so social. And I think Spanish people in particular, they see someone on their own and they're like, come with us, you know, like they invite you to things. Like I think you'd have to actually put an effort to be like lonely here, you know? Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, how do you feel when you think about living, you know, being back in the States? Every time I go back to visit, it's just like buying food. I'm like, seriously, it's that much now? Um, the traffic, um, and there's also politically, there's just kind of this underlying like anger. Even my dad, who I, always always votes conservative you know he's like if this country gets any crazier like we're going to Europe you know like we're leaving which I'm like coming from my dad I'm like what I was gonna ask you Erica before we yeah. finish up is if somebody wanted to make this move what would you recommend take James's course <laughs> <laughs> all right next stop high rise Hola. David and Patrick retired to Spain in October 2022. They left behind busy professional lives in Seattle, came on the non-lucrative visa, and bought and renovated this beautiful apartment. Who are these guys? So this is uh, Agatha Christie, and this is Harper Lee. <coughs> Agatha Christie and Harper Lee. <coughs> is this the tour? I usually start with a tour. Are we oh, on no, the tour now? This is the tour. Yeah, we're on the tour. We're on the <laughs> tour. We bought the, uh, the apartment well yeah. ahead of schedule. Yeah because of this terrazza and that yeah. view. Yeah, I mean, wow. Yeah, but the views. We can see most of the major landmarks. You're standing in the Salani Comodor. Okay, was there was the wall, there were walls. And the dining room was right here. There's a wall where that pillar is. Okay. And then there were two bedrooms over there. Okay. Two bedrooms. One bedroom here, one bedroom there, the kitchen, and one tiny bathroom. We turned this into a bedroom. That's this is bedroom. your bedroom. Okay, I love the... Another yeah, the feature wall, wall. Yeah. yeah, and then the uh, this is our, and this is where I'm sleeping. This yeah. is exactly. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. our. Office. This is beautiful though. How you've done this with the two sinks and yeah. the shower, shower here. here. Oh, lovely. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh wow! Next to nothing in it. I, wow! This is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, except for a third. What do you guys eat? <laughs> we had met some uh, a Spanish, a couple of Spanish guys, and they they introduced us to their friends, and their friends have introduced us to their friends. Yeah. And like this morning, I went dog walking with some friends that we had met through their friends, through their friends, okay. and they had bought a place just a couple of blocks down. And you're speaking English with these people, right? Yeah. Yes and no. So there's a couple of people that don't speak any English at all. Yeah. So it really helps us to. Yeah. And you know, obviously we're at the very beginning of this, yeah. so you know, we can say I went to a museum yesterday and it was great, or I yeah. want food, but we can't have real conversations. Yeah. But between us all and between people helping us to translate, yeah. no, it's lovely. So we you know, we see them all the time and it's it's we got very lucky here. Yeah. Here everything is about is about family or getting together yeah. or what have you seen yeah. or where have you walked lately or the park or yeah. whatever. And everything in the States it's also the same, I mean, it is the same, but you're always talking about work because everybody is so consumed with work. Yeah. And I think part of the reason is people here truly live by that adage, I work to live. Yeah. And in, in the States, and especially high-tech hubs in Seattle, I mean, 
everybody lives to work. I mean, yeah. everybody's working constantly and it's a grind. I always think is when you, when you move to a place, you're moving towards something, you know, when mm -hmm. you've spoken about the life that you're experiencing here and that you're, that you're falling in love with, but you're also running away from something. Well, you know, running away can be a strong word, but you're, you're going towards and you're going away from. So what, what was the, 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 the leaving for you? What were you leaving? I was ready to be finished with the, what I call the, th the second third. Like yeah. our first third were children yeah. and we're growing and learning and whatnot. And then your second third, you're doing things and you're building, you're building companies, you're, yeah. you're uh, uh, building a career. And then in third third, it's kind of like, you relax and enjoy the fruits of that mm -hmm. to some extent, depending on who you are and how that works out, right? Yeah. And then I think we really wanted an adventure. A lot of the things that I was worried about before, you get here, and you're not working and you're relaxed and all of that stress mm -hmm. goes away and you're like, I don't ever want to go back to that life. I love the United States. Mm -hmm. I am absolutely pro United States. I hate Trump, but I'm pro US. But we've got big issues and we need to deal with those issues. You can't decide to go move to another culture in another country because something magical is going to happen and that's going to make your life better. If I, you're coming here because, oh, this will be perfect, it won't be. Mm. No, and, and there's, there's just as much uh, reason to be concerned as he's alluded to with uh, the politics in, in Spain. There's always something you could be concerned about mm. and maybe should be. See, if the why is because my life is a misery in the United States, mm. uh, trust you me, it'll be in your suitcase when you get here. The problems that we have in the United, had in the United States, we still have them. Or, mm. And if we don't, it's because we've worked it through. Mm. But it's not because of where I'm standing. It's not as cheap as as you were led to believe. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you have people on these blogs saying, oh, you can live here comfortably for a thousand euros a month, which is yeah. not, not accurate. I mean, if you, you can live here, people but do. I mean, do you want to go out ever with your friends? Do you want to get tapas? Do you want yeah. to go to the museum? Do you want to travel? I mean... I'm here just after Valencia's Fires Festival, the most important event in the city's cultural calendar, full of flames and pyrotechnics. David and Patrick take me to see La Virgen de los Desemparados, the city's patron virgin, a pilgrimage point for over 100,000 locals who over the last few days have come to decorate her with fresh flowers. Are you going to feel Valencian at some point? This will be kind of part of you or, or I'm very conscious having seen how alive this tradition really is that I'm very conscious that we are very much tourists at this moment yeah. even though we live here and uh, that we are watching as people keep this tradition alive and really participate in it yeah they're not simply going through the motions that when you see the faces of the fagueras as they bring the flowers in they are often crying they're very emotional yeah. it means a lot to them yeah I'm curious about David and Patrick's experience of moving here while still being early in this Spanish learning journey. Concept. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. The thing, of course, I had never even begun to learn Spanish before I got here. Yeah. So I thought, of course, I'm going to be immersed. It'll be easy to learn. But the fact is, you can say in perfect Spanish what you want at a restaurant on the go. Anything else? Yeah. Anything else you need? Do you want anything else? Or they'll yeah. say just like that, I speak English. And it's not so immersive because it's, it's, it's not an international city. But I mean, there's so many cultures that are here yeah. and so many visitors. Everybody speaks. English. I'm, I'm a girl fan, by oh, the way. Oh, hello. This is Corinne. This is who we oh, were talking about. I am about. such a girl fan. Where did you move from? Um, uh, Virginia. What was it for you that wasn't quite fitting? Honestly, politically, I, I think the U.S. is a shit show. Am I yeah. allowed to say that? You can say that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want somewhere where life and daily experiences are more important than the work grind, than the political divisions. I just want to enjoy life. You guys are having a great experience, and I think, is anything bad about this? Like, you know, is it, is, it, is there a negative, or is it, you know? Having retired and yeah. stepped back, there were moments where I felt, you know, I was having like emotional currents in yeah. myself that I was, they sometimes surprised me, right? Yeah. And, um, and it's because it's, it's an intense step to like let go of all of that. If you're going to be happy doing something like leaving the country of your birth and, and childhood and then going somewhere else, yeah. you had better get pretty good at just let it go. It'll be all right. It's so great, so great, so great, so great, so Ciao, ciao.
Hola! I'm filming already. Oh, boy. <laughs> beware, beware. I like to get all the natural, natural reactions. Hey, Christine, Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? Good Two kisses. Michael and Christine left Cleveland for Valencia's trendy Ruthafa neighborhood in August 2022. With the help of Michael's dual European and US nationality, they can work remotely for their jobs back in the US while their two young girls go to the local school. Oh wow, what a beautiful open plan space. Yeah. yeah. So this is amazing. The, um, one of the attractions of this apartment was that it was just recently renovated. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest considerations were the location, because yeah. the girls wanted to be able to walk to school. Yeah. So that was kind of first priority. Yeah. Second priority was, you know, we just, we like this area of town. Yeah. It's super convenient. We're 15 minutes from most everything. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and then the third one was we just needed a bunch of space because we both work from home. Okay, so the American kitchen. Yeah, it's super functional. Um, we had induction in the States, which we love, so that's yeah. great, but we have everything, right? We have the oven, we okay. have the dishwasher. We also came from, you know, a house that had a very big kitchen yeah. and a very big, actually we had two refrigerators. You had two refrigerators. Um, okay, so how's your, so, and, but, can I see inside the fridge? This is, uh, the last guys mm -hmm. just had champagne. Just and, got back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's, but, yeah, no, this is uh, this is similar to all the fridges I've seen so far. But but the big, right, the big difference is, right, in the States, we would have gone every two weeks to Costco yeah. and, like, just cram the thing full of stuff, and mm -hmm. here we go to the market every other day. Yeah. Thinking about, like, you know, why did you leave the States? So we decided that we wanted the girls to learn another language, mm -hmm. um, and so then it became a question of, well, what should that language be? Yeah. And it was a pretty easy decision that it should be Spanish. So neither one of us had studied Spanish in no. the past. We want them to be exposed to multiple cultures, right? Yeah. So in, if you live in Spain, right, you can do what we did last week and go to Italy, right? Yeah. You can you visit friends in London, right? Yeah. So you have, it's very easy to be exposed to multiple cultures. Mm -hmm. Was there any dissatisfaction with life in the States or was it more? It was becoming increasingly difficult for us to try to explain to the girls kind of what was going on because the decisions that were being made at many levels were kind of against the, the values that we were trying to teach. Women's rights were being chipped away at, mm -hmm. you know, um, rights for, for minorities, rights for um, gay, lesbian community, like everything. It just felt like we were taking steps backwards. In the news and things in the States, sh you know, shootings in schools, was that something that felt like an issue or does it, you know, you sometimes you get a sense that parents are really afraid of it. That was absolutely one of the considerations in terms of like, look, this is crazy, right? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, gun safety and gun violence, it was definitely for me something on my mind, not because I was concerned on a daily basis that we would you know, fall victim to it, yeah. but because we were increasingly going in the wrong direction. How are you learning the language? Or how is your level now? And what are, what's the plan? Oh, uh, we are very we're solid A1. A1 solid, A1. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're working on past tense. Okay. But um, I just want to be able to not have to think three times in my head what I'm about to say when I say something in Spanish, right? So that's my goal. How are the girls going with Spanish? You know, younger people learn it more easily. Yeah, absolutely. Um, by the way, some of the best ice cream in Valencia right here. Oh, really? Okay, a little, little food tour stop here. Best ice cream in Valencia. <laughs> you know, they definitely have a better ear, particularly for the accent. Yeah. yeah. Um, so our younger one in particular, who's, and, and I think their musical training has helped them okay. with that ear, yeah. right? And so the, the younger one in particular, her accent, I mean, at least to me, seems she really pretty good. She gets compliments on her accent all the time. Really? Okay, so this is your local market? This is where you shop? Um, in Cleveland, there's the West Side Market, which is a very similar, and it's something I went to as a kid, you know, really loved going there. Yeah. And so, again, to you know, bring the girls through here and have them understand, like, not only the variety of foods, but where the food is coming from, and it's, you know, fresh. And This is where you get your fruit and veggies? Yeah, yeah especially uh, carrots, tomatoes, um, things like that. As you go through, right, you try different things, and you have different experiences, and yeah. some of it is based on the product you get and some of it is based on the interaction you have with the person yeah right this stand in particular they've always been very nice very understanding of our Spanish but have really good tomatoes I think sometimes and they have like a younger like a daughter or something that's there and it's really nice yeah. and like talks to the girls so they like to go okay. there pressure's on Christine don't worry nosotros uh, yeah. we, fuimos a Italia para una semana Oh. Ah, fueron a Italia por una semana? Sí. Ah, mira. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.
Are you buying fish here at all? And uh, no. never gotten that brave. The Too girl, scary. The girls will not even go in there. Oh, really? It smells just bad. I, I'm curious what the like. How how different is life here from life in the states? On a typical day, right? I might. You know, on the way back from dropping off the girls, stop and pick something up at the market yeah. and come back and then be yeah, able we'll to work for a little bit. Um, but then it's time to find something for lunch. So, you know, we come out and go to the party bar or come down here. I think it's just, you know, feeling like you're part of the fabric of the community, which yeah. is nice. In, in the States, are you more like living in your home and maybe getting, getting in a car, car. Getting, getting in your car. Getting your car. Yeah. To go everywhere, yeah. 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 So how's it been for you, Christine? Like, what would you say is like really standing out as the lifestyle differences? Definitely more walking, just yeah. the walking to and from school, walking everywhere we go because we don't have a car. Yeah. I think we're also more um, intentional about um, <sighs> how we spend our free time in terms of like traveling to other places too. Like we did some travel through Spain to Cordoba and, and Granada. We've got a few more trips planned for this year. So, um, so just really trying to take advantage of the proximity of Spain to everything else. What would you, what advice would you give to somebody who's thinking of making this move? I would say, um, you know, don't be intimidated by the language. Like if, if you don't speak Spanish, like that is not a barrier to coming here. Um, as long as you're open-minded about it. Hasta luego, ciao. So having just left Michael and Christine, and I'm wondering what my takeaways are. They all seem to be doing really well. They all seem to be doing really well, but they're also all after six months or a year in that honeymoon phase. And that makes me curious to share my experience after 12 years here in Spain. Uh, and maybe talk to other people, expats or immigrants, whichever term you prefer, who've been here longer and, and see what it's like after the honeymoon phase is over. Does it get easier? Does it get harder? I gotta pick up the pace, catch my train, head back to Madrid, see Yoli and Lucia. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see you in the next episode. Ciao.